Hello guys, welcome to the channel and today I thought I'd bring you along to have a look at what a typical week for me looks like um, as a freelance creative in London. So right now I'm just sitting with my camera, getting the tripod out, getting the lens on the body, getting it all set up and plugging it in. Um, right now I'm actually taking time lapses of a mural for um, an ad agency that I've been working with lately quite a bit. Time lapses, in case you don't know, they take a long time to do and you kind of just have to sit there and wait for the camera to do its thing. And in that time, I like to listen to podcasts. As you can see, I've got my earbuds in and I'm listening to a podcast. Um, I'm also um, looking out, making sure that people don't try to steal my stuff. Um, that's sort of one of the downsides of working out on the street. One thing about this job is that I'm really glad I get to use some gear that I never usually use. And for example, this slider here, it just, I don't know why I don't use it more often. It's so portable. I got this in my backpack and I'm able to get really cool shots, really creative shots like, like this one, like going on diagonally. So the job is taking place here in Shoreditch, which is in East London. It's sort of regarded as like a creative hub full of artists, ad agencies, fashion designers, anything creative, it's here. And about four years ago when I decided to go full time with this sort of photography videography thing, I sort of came up with these sort of vague goals that to me would define success or define um, making it. They were sort of goals that I told myself if I oh, if only I had that, I wish I had that. And one of those things was to work in shortage. And now obviously, you know, I probably meant at the time to work full time in shortage. Um this you know, obviously this is a freelance job, but at the same time, this is me doing work in shortage. And the weird thing was is that I you know, for all intents and purposes I had achieve that goal that I set myself years ago but despite that realization that I had sort of achieved a goal I still didn't feel like I had I still didn't have that satisfaction that I was seeking in fact the same thing happened when I had realized other goals that I set myself uh, for example, it always been a dream of mine to be contacted by a brand or by a business to do work for them. And that happened to me um, a few months ago. And again, I didn't feel that satisfaction that I thought I would feel. Another goal of mine was to not only be contacted for work, but to also travel for work, to be paid to travel, to to have my accommodation paid for, to have my travel paid for, and to actually go out and work. And last Christmas, that actually even happened with this company as well. And at the time, it did feel great. But the novelty, that sense of achievement sort of wore off quickly. Maybe it was the nature of the job, which is why I didn't feel that sense of satisfaction. For example, these photos were taken at the location. It was in the south of Wales. And as you can see, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, the job there was just a corporate event. These photos were taken before the event because I had some downtime. And it's sort of like a sad realization um, <laughs> because, you know, you think you want something and then you get it and then you realize that you don't feel you didn't get that satisfied and you thought you would get i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing i think it's good that you know that you do feel hungry that all the time that when you reach something and it doesn't feel like you thought it would that it then pushes you to go for the next thing to keep going 
And I don't think this is necessarily an unhealthy mentality to have because, as I said before, it keeps you hungry, it keeps you ambitious, it keeps you going. Because, especially in this field as a freelance creative, that is something you need to have. You need to be moving forward constantly. The truth is that you don't know when your next job is going to come. You have to constantly be hunting, constantly be knocking on doors, sending out emails and you know unless you have a sort of recurring you know retainer with someone you're gonna have to be looking for work all the time so the company that i'm working with are an ad agency but instead of doing billboards they do hand painted murals and the thing is with murals is that people sort of react differently to them. They stop, they talk about it, they talk to you about it. And my job is to capture the process of it, uh, take creative shots, uh, make a time lapse, many, many time lapses. And yeah. So at the end of every day, I take the SD cards back to the main office uh, where they will be backed up. And that is the last order of business, at least for this particular job. And after that, I pack up my stuff and I will cycle home. Um, this time around, because it was a long way from my house, I got a line bike. Um, this footage here is actually from the weekend, so not actually from the job, but I didn't have any footage of me cycling that day, so. As a freelancer, you have to do all of your own admin, all of your office admin, basically. So right now I'm just writing up an invoice for the company, which is kind of nice because at the end of it, you get to send them a nice big invoice, which is nice. But that joy is very short lived because I'm already thinking about the next job and thinking about, you know, where is the next bit of money going to come? Now, that sort of uncertainty over money and financial security um, does have one upside, is that I'm very flexible on my schedule. I get to sort of choose my own hours and it allows me to have plenty of, of time for extracurricular activities, such as touch rugby, which I picked up recently. Um, back in the day when I was at school, I was massively into rugby and it's been a long time since I played any team sports. and my second love well let me s really it's my first love is going to the gym um for the past you know almost 13 14 years of my life the gym has been my constant it's been my my haven my sanctuary you know people want to talk about meditation and doing things for your mental health this is it this is mine and you know, without it, you know, I don't know where I'd be. And I think it's important, you know, no matter how tough it gets, no matter what your mood is, it's always really important to have a space outside of home, outside of work, where, you know, you don't have to think about those things. And for me, I'm very fortunate that I have a lifestyle that allows me this, um, that allows me to carve out an hour or two almost every single day to just focus on myself so yeah that's basically my week um you know there's some meals i had some you know i went out uh with my girlfriend and went out for lunch and all that but you know i don't think you guys want to see that um but this was i would say a good week you know i had work coming in the sun was shining and you know this to be honest this isn't typical um, it's taken me a long time taking me many years to get to a point where I can show you a good week um, and I think that goes back to what I was saying you know having goals milestones and you know always being hungry and for me even though I, I, I ticked off a couple of milestones you know in the past year or so I have, you know, I'm always trying to 
do better and for example I want to be doing more of the work that I want to do you know as far as you know time lapses go it's not the most creative thing it's not the most challenging thing and you know I know it's just a matter of networking and working at it and I know what I kind of have to do so if there's anything photo or video wise you need done hit me up at same reason photo and with all that said and done boys and girls I'll see you all in the next one.